I went to NYU for film for a very short period of time. Film. I yeah, film. I realized after a year, basically, that it was, it was not for me. Um, so I got myself removed uh, from NYU, and I started to work in the industry. When you say removed, like you... I behaved badly enough to lose my scholarship so that I couldn't afford it because I refused to go into debt for college. Yeah, good. So, yeah. So they don't teach that. <laughs> but and it worked out. I mean, it worked out. So I started to work in the uh, music video and, and TV commercial industry in New York City. I very quickly realized that I was able to do a lot of the jobs on set, started to ghostwrite some music videos for people, started to direct some stuff, started to make enough money where I could just like take months off and, and travel because mm -hmm. I was living lean, right? It yeah. was just me, and my dog, and my girlfriend at the time. Uh, and I was like, I want to go see the world. I want to travel the world and shit. And so uh, I... I Went to, moved to Spain for six months. I was in Hong Kong, the Philippines. I was in China, Vietnam, Thailand. Um, Jesus. Just Cuba. And I was always with Cuba. a camera. Cuba? How, yeah. how did that happen? Well, I got a diplomatic uh, pass to go and shoot a documentary with a company I was working with about music and baseball. Mm -hmm. Two things I love, right? So we go down. Um, and it's a crazy trip. They're like, don't get your passport stamped. I'm like, no, I'm getting that shit stamped. Yeah. I was like, what are they going to do? But yeah. we, I got it stamped. It was, but it wasn't like a regular passport stamp. So it was just like a smudge. But yeah. Um, but we were there for like eight days and it was incredible, dude. It was an eye opening experience. I realized, like, you know, what com compared to where I was coming from, where these people were at and what they had and what they had access to, I had no right to complain ever again. Like, because mm -hmm. if they're making this music and they're, they're playing baseball with this much passion and, uh, you know, and this food and, and the cultural part of it was incredible. It's like they're making this even though they don't have a lot. I have opportunity to have everything. I got to go and do it. Like, yeah. You know, and so that trip changed me. Um, that same year, uh, I f was the year I really met Mikey Sepso. Yeah. I met him uh, through a mutual friend. Uh, he, they were dating each other, uh, they, they, each other's sisters. They had tw there were twin sisters, and Mikey was dating one, and my friend was dating the other. Like four months, five months after I met him, maybe six months after I met him, um, we had, my girlfriend and I had announced we were going to get married in Bali. Holy shit. He flew out, even though I barely knew the dude, right? Yeah. Like I kind of knew we'd hung out and we were like, we, we were, we were buddies, but, um, but when we mostly hung out partying and playing video games yeah. at, at our mutual friend's house. But once he flew out, I was like, yeah, homie's like, all Down right, cool. He flew to Bali. You know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, so really quickly, Mike Sepso is the other co-founder co yeah, of MLG. Yeah. And, and a, a business partner of mine to this day, mm -hmm. uh, in a bunch of stuff. And so anyway, fast forward a bit. My, Wife and I break up after like three months. Yeah, divorce or break break up. Break, yeah, just done. Okay, um, and uh, I'm like, uh, it's me and my dog, dude. I'm just yeah. like, what do I do? And yeah. He's like, hey, <laughs> come move into my place with me. Get out of here. Stay here for a little while until yeah. you get on your feet. I do that. Um, How old were you at the time? At this point, I was uh, I was 26. How 26. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, and so. Um, <laughs> Then we uh, fast forward a bit. I'm back on my feet. My consultancy stuff has kind of slowed down because I've ignored it for two months after mm -hmm. the breakup. He started a company and he's like, Yo, I need help. Will you come work with me and my business partner? I'm like, sure, I'll give it a shot. So I come in, I'm like third or fourth employee. Uh, we build up this consulting business called Gotham Broadband. Uh, and basically what we're doing is we're getting paid by people to figure out what high speed internet is going to be used for. Right. So like we're doing all this consulting work. They're paying us. We're designing like the websites of the future that actually have video on them. And all this stuff, like, you gotta, this is this is back in the day. This is like, you know, 98, 99, 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus. Yeah. Way back. I'm old. I'm 46. Um, anyway, 9-11 happens. Internet bubble pops. Uh Shit gets, goes south. We decide to liquidate the business, pay back all the investors, and take some time off. Mm -hmm. That summer, 2001, 2002, play a lot of Halo, a lot of well, a lot of video games. I think I think Tekken was still was what what we were hitting with, and then um, some a little bit of golf, not that much because we we're both not really that good. Mm -hmm. But we were like, yo, let's like figure out what we're gonna do, and we said video games is gonna be it, uh, and competition is gonna be part of it because we're both competitive motherfuckers, and so. That's where really this all started. And we originally just started out as Ambi Games, right? That was the original name of the company because we didn't know what we were going to be yet. We, we was kind of stealth mode. Like Ambi, like Ambitextures? Yeah, AMBI, exactly. We were going to go left, go right. We weren't sure yet. And then uh, 
we did some research. We saw these kids are having tournaments and there's stuff happening over in Korea and these guys and that's like crazy, but it's not, I, we didn't think that would play here. So like we had, how do we bring that to the States? How do we bring that to the, you know, to North America? Um, Where'd you do the research for something like that? Because the internet as, as, it, as it, it is. It was message boards, bro. It was like, it was really, it, and, and also because we were also in touch with people who worked at these companies that were providing high speed internet access and South Korea was ahead of everybody at the time, bro. It, they, there was government, uh, you know, supplemented, they had internet. <laughs> where most people didn't and online gaming was just you know was, was was becoming a thing with doom and descent and you know and blizzard was blowing up with wow and stuff and so it was just an opportunity for us to see that okay you know there's there's a movement mm -hmm. right where people are going to be able to sit in their living rooms and play against each other this is before you could uh which makes me sound even older but yeah. <laughs> but i was like yo i'm gonna, I'm gonna do this i'm gonna build this shit like like this is it like i i know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And this is it. Um, fast forward, we, you know, we launch, we find Halo. So, so before you get ahead of it, because yeah. I, 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 a lot of people, like and me included, want to know from an entrepreneurial standpoint, like how you did it. Like you, 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 you skip from, from saying, I know what I'm supposed to be doing now, and then you fast forward it. Yeah. Don't fast forward it. Okay, please right, please right, tell, right. And, and, I, and, I, and I ask kindly because I am so curious about what sort of thought made you say, not thought, but strategy, and, and, and how do you find the resources? How do you know what it is that you need in a business that hasn't, that's, that's sort of been created, but not perfected, right. which, right. which is what I think that you and, and, and the crew did, perfected on, online and video game competitions for, for what it's worth. I mean, I'm biased, yeah. sure. Yeah. I don't care. No, I'm no, 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 so am I, and I appreciate that. No. It, well, it's, it's, what it came down to was you have to be able to look into the future a little bit and say, will this behavior eventually be big enough? Will it scale to a point where it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. Where it's an industry and, and there's opportunity there. And, um, and then you just have to take a ticket and ride with it, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and believe in yourself and, and speak to a lot of people and find mentorship and, and find people you can talk to who you trust um, and wake up every day and, and you know, say, okay, today I got to move it forward, right? Because in the beginning, it's slow, right? I didn't have, at the time, I had some money, uh, but not a ton saved up. So it was like every month was a, it was a question of, right, am I going to do this or am I going to, you know, go and enjoy myself and get a, get a job where I know that everything is secure, right? And, and later on in the business, I'll talk about it a little later, like there was a point where it was a, either I stop right now mm -hmm. or I never stop. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, what you've got to do is you've got to fail quickly, I guess, right? It's the little, with, for, with the little things, it's like, okay, that didn't work. Let's stop it. That didn't work. Let's stop it. But this is working. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. right? Let's do more of that. And, and what do we think? If that's working, what else do we think will work? And over time, you get something called wisdom, right? Because you get experience. Because yeah. right? you have, you have uh, the ability to look at your track record and, and other people's as well. So for me, um, I had a partner who had skill sets that uh, complemented mine. Not necessarily a lot of overlap in the beginning, right? Mikey was the one side of the business. I was the other. Um, and I had a vision and people always ask me many years later, like, is this what you envision? Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, shit's bigger. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. No, it's still going to be bigger. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. like, we're not done. They're not done. So how could I be done? Yeah. So I, I think my, my point of advice for anybody who's out there who's saying, like, what, what, what do I need? Yeah, how? Belief in yourself is number one, yeah. right? Above everything else. Willingness to fail, too, because if you go into it afraid to fail, you already have. Yeah. A lot of the time, you already really have. And also, an undying belief that, like, what you, what you are like, this is what I'm creating, this is how I'm going to get there. You believe in that. You believe in yourself. You do what it takes. Yeah. More often than not, you're going to get it done. I like that, man. You know, be quick to fail. That's so good. Because, you know, in, in my opinion, and, and for me specifically, I've I've never been afraid to to fuck up, you know. Like yeah. I, that's just not the, the I'm not I'm not built that yeah. that way. And when somebody has that fear in their head about failing, it's like the same thing was like don't look down or yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever happens, if you think about it hard enough, it's gonna happen whether you want to or not. Right. Right. right? It's exactly. like if you look at the Matrix, it's like you know he knocks. Yeah. It's like, don't worry about knocking down that flower pot. And then he's like, oh shit, boom, knocks it down. It's like it's like what would happen if I didn't say? So I'm 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 glad that you said that because I think it's it's super imperative in a in, in an entrepreneurial self to to be willing to learn more than anything. And the biggest lessons 
come from hurting and yeah. failure. Yeah, and absolutely. that and that's insane. It, it, just really quickly, imagine if what happened to me took longer than a year. You know, and now we're looking five years down the line, and the same yeah. outcome happens that happened just now. Luckily for me, yeah. it failed quickly for me to learn from that. Well, no, but, but that's look. I think things also as you get older and wiser and have more experience things tend to accelerate a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. As the stakes get higher, if you, again, your resistance or your holding on, your your refusal, right, could have put you in a position where things would have taken longer for you to recognize and realize, right? And it's not a failure in the sense that you failed, it's a failure in the sense that what was created, like the, yeah. the situation was not the right situation for yeah. you, right? I mean, yeah. I, I think that's that's what I see, at least. And, and from talking to you, I know that, um, it's just, it's more information to be yeah. put to use yeah. at a later date. Yep. Yeah. Right? Yeah.